All right, let's talk about this again. What is faith? How does it work? And we're going to try to understand what the Bible means by we're saved by faith. Very important. So let's define it. What is faith? What is faith? It is something that's proof to us that we know and believe in about something that we can't see, never will see, or maybe we don't see it yet. So it's knowledge or trust in something that's not seen or not seen yet. Now, what is it? How does it work is the next thing. How does it work? So we got this substance of what faith is, this internal knowledge that we believe in and trust on something that we can't see or can't see yet, but how does it work? And we want to talk about the two components that make up the mechanism of faith. And faith is one of those things that belongs to everybody. Everybody uses it, even atheists, who can't prove there's no God, but they just believe there's no God. The scientific theory of theory of evolution, it's a it's a theory. It's evolution. They believe in it and they use faith and Faith belongs to everybody. So let's take a look at the first definition, a clearer definition of what faith is. The ability to believe, to know, to perceive, and live as if certain things that are not seen, or not yet seen, in the natural world, will manifest to become seen. Or they may never ever be seen, they're always invisible, but you still believe in it. Alright, now the ability to believe, to know, and to trust something that is not yet seen that will become objectively manifest. It's not in the material world yet, such as when they believed that they could build an airplane and fly. That had never been done before. It was only in the mind, but it became manifested. They had faith in that project. So the ability to know something without seeing it manifested yet. That's the definition of faith. Okay? Now, how does it work? There's two components of faith, the internal and the external. The internal and the external, subjective and the objective. We're going to look at that again right now too as well. Right? So we have the internal, right? The internal part of this which is in your mind right and it is subjective right only you only you really know it's true well other people might believe the same faith you have about something many people believe that the airplane could be built and they all had faith before it was manifested right so this is not just a religious thing we're talking about faith belongs to everybody now you can have faith in religion. You can have faith in atheism. It's the, it's the mechanism. So the two components that make up how it works is that it's in the mind first. It's in the mind first. It's internal first. And then there is an external manifestation in the world, right? Subjective that is objective that you can see, touch, and sense through the uh, sensations of your perception. So there's an internal subjection in the mind and there's an external worldly manifestation and it's objective. You can measure and uh, repeat it and things like that. In other words, people that fly in airplanes every day don't realize they use faith. It takes faith to get on an airplane. You say, no, it's scientific. We have uh, proven that this works. Well. Tell that to the, per the people that crashed, died, and burned, and they're dead now. No, they technically and literally believed, trusted, and knew that that airplane was going to get them from point A to point B. They used faith. And uh, without getting too much into it, science is, is rooted in faith. You really can't begin uh, new innovations and, and create uh, things with patents and invent things without believing, without faith. Faith is the root of every human being's thought process. So these things are absolute, you cannot change them. Subjective in mind, objective in actions, 
You'll see actions in the world manifested in somebody's behavior. For instance, if somebody believes that they want to lose weight, right? Lose, lose 50 pounds, right? You will see objectively, you will see them exercise. You will see them eat healthy better, right? So there is an objective quality to the faith that they say they have. They know it, they believe it, they trust it, and they're moving in that direction objectively. Okay, let's say somebody has a faith that they're going to lose weight, and it's only in the mind. They want to lose weight over here. Let's say that they want to lose weight, right? And they believe it with faith. And they know and trust and believe that they're going to lose weight. However, there is no objective measure, no objective reality to this thing, this object of faith, this object of faith here has no objective reality. So what we call that is in scripture, it's called dead faith, literally. In other words, the devils believe that Jesus is God, but that knowledge doesn't lead them to worship, to trust, to love, to fear, to bow down to, to follow, to obey. It, it doesn't change their behavior from what they know, because faith really is knowledge. Faith is a kind of knowledge that is invisible to people, and we use it every day based on uh, well, we're based on goals, based on belief systems, based on teachings. You can have faith in something that's actually truthful, and you can have faith on something that's actually harmful, or an illusion, or a deception, and many people believe lies, and they put their trust in lies, uh, and it's a mechanism. So what, what I'm trying to get you to understand is faith belongs to everybody. Let's look at that. Faith belongs to everybody. Let's, I want to try to get you to see is faith belongs to everybody. Faith belongs not just to religious people, although there is something called the faith in religious circles that is in reference to Christianity, usually uh, faith in Jesus, this kind of thing. But faith is used every day. I'm going to move to Arizona because I have faith. I'll get a job and I'm just going to go for it. This kind of thing. And it's everywhere all the time. You get up, you cash your paycheck, and your paycheck's always good. Your boss always gives you the money. You don't think that you're using faith for that because it happens on so repetitive of a success rate that you don't think that you have to trust, believe, and hope that the next one will be good. But one day somebody goes to work and the check bounces and there's no money and you realize right away that, hey, uh, this is requiring faith, right? So it's built into everything in our lives and people that deny that don't understand faith very well. So you have faith used by righteous people to believe, to believe things that will lead to the salvation of the soul. And then you have the wicked who use faith to gain the whole world. You can become a millionaire with faith. You can do a lot of things you can get rich, you can build houses, you can start businesses, you can believe, 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 and get all kinds of things. And it is a powerful mechanism. It's a reality that we all share, both the righteous and the wicked. So the wicked use their faith to gain the world. Their faith will, their faith will not save their souls. Not soul save. Okay? This faith for the righteous will save the soul. Okay? That is a huge difference. That is a huge difference. And I want you to understand, what are you using your faith for? Are you using your faith to believe in God? To believe in everything about God and the teachings of God? Or are you using your faith to believe what the world teaches? Create your own God, be your own God, do your own thing, gain as much as you possibly can, do your own goodness, be a good person, and that's good enough. Because that's what the world teaches. You can be good enough to you know, please any God that's out there. Well, 
faith in God over here says you have to believe in the Son of God and be forgiven of your sins through His blood sacrifice and obey His teachings. That's the only way you can ever be good. The, faith, the world teaches another way of being saved. There is a salvation that you can put your faith in over here. There is a salvation, but the salvation for the wicked and what they believe will save them, actually, they're putting their faith in a false salvation. A false salvation is believing you're okay, believing you're going to be saved, believing you're going to go to heaven, believing you're a good person, but not really. Because the requirements, God's requirements over here are through Jesus. God's requirements are through the Son of God. And if we don't put our faith in the Son of God, which is where real salvation is, then you're going to be putting your faith in a false salvation instead of the true salvation. All right? So everyone has faith, righteous and wicked. There's the definition of faith is believing things that you can't see yet, or you may never see them, but believing in invisible things. And it's, it's to the point where you know that it's going to be true. It's knowledge. Uh, and the wicked believe in things that they believe in, that they know to be true. And they may be right about a whole bunch of stuff. They may actually gain a million dollars. They may actually have a, a house on the hill and gain the whole world. Then Jesus said, you can do that. And you can believe in everything and gain everything and it can be successful and you can be accurate and you can be right 99.99% .99 of the time but when it comes to saving your soul when it comes to being that part you can be right about 99% of everything up here and be wrong about this 1% thing down here and lose your whole soul Jesus says you can gain the whole world and lose your soul and so we want to make sure that we have the right kind of faith in the right thing so think about all this and understand that the definition of faith is believing in things that you can't quite see yet and the components of faith the components are a subjective internal quality that only you yourself have a connection with and then it must be accompanied by an objective action if the Wright brothers believed an airplane could be built and they never performed the actions to bring it about in the in into the material world then your faith is absolutely useless. If it's only subjective, it is absolutely useless. Faith becomes powerful and real where you could produce million dollars in your life once the act of objectivity and the actions and the behavior prove what you believe on the inside. Otherwise, otherwise it's just dead words. Oh, I believe, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire one day. 20 years later, he's still a bum, right? <laughs> That's because it was subjective, hopeful, wishful, and maybe he did believe. But there was not the proper objective actions to really bring it about in reality. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand faith. We're going to do more videos, hopefully better videos, going through the same process, cleaning this up a little bit. But uh, if you like this video, subscribe, click the bell, make a comment, and thank you for your donations, guys. I'm trying to get back to full-time ministry. So donations are very helpful at my website, wearethelastgeneration.com, and I hope to see you in our live stream on Saturday. Come live stream with us. We uh, have deep, uh, deep conversations about the world and the universe and the Bible. So I love you, and see you then.